Hello everyone. I have two spreads in my ancestry journey book that I'm going to share with you today. So I'm starting by kind of flipping through my book and seeing where I have open spots. So the first open spot is this page where I have a picture and I know what I want to do with that page. So we're going to work on that one first. I do have this open one, but I don't have an idea of what I want to put in there yet. If you have been following along on my ancestry journey, there is the picture of Miss Ella Plum. That was my second great grandmother who uh, was committed to the insane asylum. And that was actually her husband who committed her. Uh, I actually really love that photo of her and I'm going to scrapbook it as a 12 by 12 in the future. And then I have three more pages where I have documentation and things I want to include in my book. Uh, so we're going to do two pages today. We're going to do this pocket page and the other one, which is of my grandfather or my second great grandfather, the second great grandfather who committed my second great grandmother to the insane asylum. Um, so, but we're going to start with something fun first. And this photo is a photo of my grandparents. So this is my grandparents when they got married. And this is a photo that is really damaged. I had a really hard time digitizing it and getting it to a point where you could kind of print it and look at it and even ascertain who was in the photo really. Um, but I wanted to put it just on the other side of the first page. So that first page has all kinds of information about my grandparents' marriage, newspaper articles, um, a photograph, who was in the wedding, that kind of stuff. And so the back page, I just want to include this photograph, and it's really just for pretty. Um, the photograph is not, because the photograph is so damaged, it can't be printed larger than a three and a half, three by four, and um, I didn't really want to scrapbook it as a 12 by 12 layout, but I want to include it somewhere. And so this kind of back page in my album seemed to be the perfect spot. I'm going to use 49th and Market's Spectrum Sorbet. My reasoning behind this is that these are just kind of like the addition of an extra photograph. I don't have anything to journal about or write because I've already done that on the front page. So this is just going to be pretty. And my grandparents' wedding day was a happy occasion and I really wanted to make this uh, set of cards that kind of romantic, a little bit brighter, a little bit happier than um, what I might usually go with for a layout like this. I also really did not like how this photograph was looking against uh, greens and blues. Uh, I just, I felt like it they, it was kind of just off-putting, but when you put it against some of these oranges and pinks, it became quite beautiful. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to do some fussy cutting. I'm going to cut the edge off of this little scrap and use it as a layer. The floral paper that's in the upper left hand uh, corner of my your screen is actually the back of one of the packaging and I felt like the flowers that were on that sheet were very reminiscent of like a more kind of 50s uh, vintage style and uh, my grandparents were married in the 50s so I thought that that would be a really um, a really great use and um, I thought it would look nice, those style of flowers. Some of the other ones are a bit more like realistic in this collection, but the flowers on the back of that packaging are a bit more stylized and I, I just like them a little bit better to go with the photo and everything. Matting my photo using um, just a scrap of paper. The fun part about playing and doing a six by eight album is the fact that quite often your scraps are your go-to's for these kinds of small projects. So my plan for both of these cards is just to make them pretty. <laughs> I really didn't have any other kind of ideas about it and um, 
They're going to be pretty monochromatic with the pinks and the oranges. I'm going to use some rubber ones and I'm going to use some, uh, well, I'm going to use all of the fussy cut florals that I um, fussy cut and it's just going to be pretty. So as I kind of make those decisions and cut the rub ons apart and all that kind of stuff, I'll give you a little health update. I'm still fighting with this stupid cold. <laughs> It's like the cold that won't quit. So I have, um, I actually missed my Wednesday night video. Uh, not because I didn't have content, but because I didn't have a voice. I just, I got up Wednesday and went to voiceover and get everything scheduled and I have no voice. And then when I did get my voice back, I had to save it because I did a live for Wild Whisper Wednesday night, which went very well. And I had such a good time. If you were one of the participants who came and showed up for me, thank you so, so much. I truly, truly enjoyed um, creating with all of you. Uh, so I have actually decided that I'm going to take, I've been kind of canceling plans and re- um, or rescheduling plans as much as I possibly can and I'm gonna do like grocery orders and things and stay home for probably um, 10 days to two weeks just to give my body a rest give my immune system a bit of a break um, it's obviously not doing so good because as soon as I catch as soon as I um, get better I seem to get sick right away I've been on this cycle now for um, close to a month and uh, obviously my body needs a break so that means lots of scrapbooking for you guys <laughs> it means I'm getting way ahead on my scrapbooking schedule which is really awesome um, it means you know that I've been having to kind of <clears throat> cancel plans um, and move things but I don't know what else to do at this point because I need to stop getting sick. So that's where we are. Back to the fun stuff, huh? I started each of these cards with my rub-ons so that uh, I had a nice base for them. And then I'm coming back in with the fussy cut florals. So yes, some of the rub-ons are getting covered up a bit, but I love this layered look and this is the best way to go about getting it. Another thing I want to point out, and I don't know, I think that, so the second page I'm going to do in this video, I used my nature study. Well, I mixed nature study with a couple other collections, but my nature study rub-ons, I thought when I put them, when I used them the first time, that they weren't as nice as the other rub-ons from 49th and Market. And then when I went back and used these from Spectrum Sort de Prey, it really kind of influenced, it really kind of, like, look how easy these come off. My ones from Nature Study, I think I just got, like, a funny batch, or maybe it got, they got too um, humid or too hot when they were in transit, um, but Comparatively speaking, my Nature Study rub-ons are not coming off the backing paper as nice. And I do, I think they probably just got um, something happened to them in transit. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. So I'm continuing on here just to layer things up. I didn't like how that large floral piece had all the white in the middle. And I thought about coming in with an X-Acto knife and kind of really trying to get in to all that white space but oh my goodness I was scared I'll be honest I was scared I'd mess it up so I just went ahead and covered up most of the white area and that was bugging me and that worked out really good one last little bit of text going on up here at the top and that's what we're going to call this one all done. And there are our two cards for the page in our my book. So I'm going to go ahead and slip those into the pockets. And then we're going to flip over and work on the next empty page in my book where I've like photos stashed. 
um, and for that one I'm gonna use a mix of products so um, I have some of the newest 49th and Market Nature Study Collection and then I also have some Curators Botanical and Curators Meadow. Um, I took these lines and just mixed them all up. I felt like they worked together so good. All of them are really strong neutral based collections and um, <clears throat> I knew I had a lot of the curator's botanical and a lot of the curator's meadow. Um, so I kind of purchased the nature study products so that I could just mix them all up and go. And that's what we're going to work with for this next page. I have this one 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I'm going to go ahead and cut it down. And I use both sides of the paper and um, in the end I think I cut almost all of it up because I liked the one side with all the images. I didn't like that bird but um, I liked like the text print and the floral prints and or, you know those botanical prints. So and then when I didn't like it like those birds I flipped it over and had a really nice neutral. So I'm really just going to start by cutting down all of these papers uh, this one large 12 by 12 paper and cut it down into smaller uh, pieces to work with the page I'm the pocket page that I have there I'm using the paper the papers from the back side of this to get the um, measurements right these pages with these tiny little um, squares the squares are a funny size they in theory should be two by two but they're not two by two they're like two by like an inch and three quarters or something so I started by pulling one of the squares from the back side of the paper and then using that as a template to get the measurements right and then once I had one of those botanical papers kind of the correct size you can see it there I'm just using it to cut the rest of the papers up I'm gonna use those two blocks there that have the uh, little bit of labels I'm gonna have those I'm gonna put those on the um, in there for journaling lost my train of thought I'm so sorry you guys once I had that paper all cut down I'm just gonna go through and Basically, this layout is going to come together really, really quickly. I'm going to use the rub-ons again. Uh, I'm going to use the two squares that have the labels to add some journaling. And the photo and the obituary are my second great-grandfather. So I have a photo of him holding my grandmother on his lap. And I have his obituary right there. And again, um, I'm not going to scrapbook the uh, small photo in any kind of 12 by 12 layout because it's not the best quality photo even digitized it's very much like that photo of my um grandmother and grandfather's wedding where it you have to print it at a very small size um which is totally fine i'm still super happy to have the original have saved it have been able to digitize it enough that you can make out the people in it that is absolutely 100% okay with me. Um, but I don't want to scrapbook it as a total show. There are, you'll see as I work through this, that there will be pages and times where I definitely uh, have photos that will both be in both. Ugh, of course, someone's car alarm is going on. Um, so there will be times when um, a photograph will be in both my heritage album so it'll be in this small my ancestry journey album and then it will also be it in a 12 by 12 and then we will have photos that will just be in a 12 by 12 or just be in and the ancestry album and this photograph and the photograph we just did those will be ones that will just be in this ancestry album 
initially this card that had the that has the obituary on it I wasn't going to add anything to it but it looked so plain so I'm going to pull it off and the the photo is pretty large like it takes up a lot of space but I wanted to add just a little something peeking behind it so I'm going to go ahead and add one of these mushroom rub-ons and admittedly a good chunk of it gets covered but the finished product looks good the card doesn't look out of place it doesn't look too plain and overall it does add that little bit of extra detail because I'm adding a lot of detail to the smaller cards and the card with my photo the the paper I backed it with has um, some text or a, a, a design on it and so just even though a lot of it gets covered up that added little detail really does make the whole page look cohesive in the end and you can see here like I don't know what's up with these nature study rub-ons they don't they're I, I well I can't say I don't know I know I know something happened to them in shipping they got too hot or something <laughs> so for the three across the top I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I'm gonna ink the edges using vintage photo distress oxide ink and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some ribbons this kind of keeps this page flat this book has tons of room in it though this album still has lots and lots of space in it and I have another um video coming up for you I'm not sure when it'll be scheduled uh but it there is another ancestry project because I went ahead and did all the empty pages where I had content and hadn't done the pages yet so there's two more pages that I did when I was scrapbooking this section but I split the videos up into two videos just because uh for for time I didn't want to post a video that was so 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 long um I'm gonna go ahead and link every any of the products I can still find that are in the um over at a cherry on top so if I can find it if any of these rub-ons are still in stock if any of the paper is still in stock I will definitely link those up um other than the uh, nature study rub-ons which are the mushroom rub-ons that I'm using now most of these collections from 49th and market are older collections um and I don't know for sure if any are still available um or if a cherry on top has uh gone ahead and restocked them or not but I will definitely if I can find it I will link it <laughs> so I put this rub on on the bottom of the photo and you know I knew it wasn't gonna look I wasn't gonna be super duper visible when I did it part of the reason I did it was mostly just to see if it would work would the rub on stick to the photo um and so it did which is awesome because now I know those stick really good and next time I'll do it better with more contrast and it'll look nicer, right? <laughs> it is there. You can kind of see it. You can see it well when you uh, look at the page. But I know on camera, it's really looking like I just didn't put not one thing on that picture. <laughs> one more card to do. And then this second pocket page for today is complete. Giving these uh, Nature Study Rub-Ons just a little bit more pressure and a little bit extra rub-on. And it still didn't. <laughs> oh, my. I just, I don't know. We got there in the end. And these pages look really, really nice. I'm so happy with the one that I did with that photo from my grandparents. And this one looks really good, too. Here are all of the close-ups from my Ancestry Project video today. Thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this creative process and I will see you all again over the weekend when we get to play with a main character energy and I have two 12 by 12 layouts for you one Saturday and one Sunday. Talk to you all again soon. Bye.